Hey guys, it's Matt here. Today, we will be working on the iPod 4 again. So, I think I may have figured out just a little bit more on how to get this thing working correctly. So, let's get right into it. So first of all, you may see that I had an extra little icon here. This is actually, I use this iPod, so that's why there's something here. This is actually a guide on, I need to do this stupid thing again. This is actually a guide on how to extract and de-encrypt a kernel cache. Right here, decrypting iOS kernel, oops, decrypting iOS kernel cache A4 CPU devices. And there is a huge guide here on how to do this. And it has everything you need, which is amazing. So hopefully this guide will help me. So let's get to the Mac Pro and see what I can do. Ugh, the things I do put the stupid flash drive back in here. And I have to save this, because I didn't. And then pull that out. There. So I'm just going to skip this part here because it was just a lot of boring terminal commands and such. And along with, I never, I got it working partially. I was able to decrypt the kernel cache and extract some of the texts. But in the end, what I did didn't work. So let's just move on. Hey guys, so I'm just gonna show the progress that I've made with this device. I've made still a few changes, not great ones, but it's still better than nothing. So there are only a couple things that I can really say that I've done with this. Um, at least right now, I'm still figuring out other things. First of all, there's some weird thing um, with the passcode screen. I think I keep, I like, I keep thinking I'm finding the string to remove this, but I'm not, and you can see it doesn't do anything anyways. So I'll try to enter my passcode, you can see I've got this text here to be fixed because that really bothered me. There's still a few things left that need to be changed. And I've also flat out deleted the Compass app completely. It's not on the iPod anymore. And those are really the only changes I've done right now. There's still quite a bit that I have to get done. Uh, but let me explain to you what the hardest part about this has been. While the cosmetic changes have been pretty simple, such as changing some elements to make it feel more like an iPod touch, there are some things that are a pain in the butt, and that is installing the files that I need to actually get everything working, like sound and Bluetooth and all that. These have been a huge pain in the butt to do, like to get actually working. I've put files in the system library extensions folder and they went there, sure, but they didn't actually work. They didn't initialize on boot up, although do some do, not the ones that I put in though. So that's fun. I need to figure out why that's the case because it is getting to the point where this is so annoying. Like I don't really know what to do at this point. I think at this point, I'm gonna to need to go into the iPod's kernel cache, the one that's on there, and modify the files. But the problem is, I've never actually been able to extract a kernel cache. I've been able to pull kex files out of one. I've never been able to open it up like, a, like an image file or something, which is what I'm trying to do, but I can't, I haven't figured that out yet, and I don't know if that's even possible. Kernel caches use the IMG3 format, and it is encrypted and compressed. There are ways to decrypt it, which I have done. I have decrypted it. I have decompressed it as well. But the problem is it doesn't actually give you a file that you can, well, you know, extract into a folder or something, and then you can compress back into a kernel cache. It's just, ugh, it's so annoying. I don't, I don't really know what to do. If any one of you guys in the comments actually can give me some help or anything like this, because this is a huge pain in the butt to actually get working, please do. I've seriously just been, ugh, just been working on this for ages, and I just, I feel like I'm getting so close. Like, I've got the Kex files that I made. I've extracted them. I've decompressed them. And now the iPod is just saying no to me, and I don't really know why. I was thinking it was to do with permissions, although I did check them, and I think they're correct so I'm not really sure at this point. And here's where I am now, stuck, with most of the issues still present. Well, I'm officially stumped. I have no clue what to do next, nor do I know anything that I could even try. I feel like I've tried everything I can, and I feel that whatever I do try, I get nowhere with. It's quite frustrating when the work you do ends with going back to the drawing board to start all over, but I'm not giving up. Not yet. I have a desire to see this work, and perfectly at that. I want it to seem like this device was supported with iOS 7. I want it to seem like Apple wanted it to happen. I've just got a long journey ahead of me, 
and one that will be very difficult to take. Hey guys, I'm just gonna give you a little update here on what's been going on besides the slightly inspirational clips. <laughs> I've actually been working on the iPod project for about two months now in total. Uh, not getting very far, unfortunately. Um, so I was gonna say, I'm not gonna give up with that. Uh, it will be a while before you see another one of those videos though, um, because it is just a pain in the butt to work on. But in the meantime, I bought this. This is an original iPad. In fact, the reason why I bought this is so then you could, I could see, can I put iOS 7 on here? And the answer is yes, you can. While it has never been done before, technically it has all of the same specifications as the iPod Touch 4 with an A4 processor, different display, but that's fine. It has 256 megs of RAM like the iPod 4 does. This guy actually has 64 gigabytes of storage, so it is much better than the iPod in that regard. The problem is I've not gotten it to work. No matter what I've tried, I've tried the dual boot method, which errors out at uh, some point uh, before I can even boot iOS 7. So it's not ruled out completely. If I can fix that error, then it may work. And restoring it through iTunes has not given me any luck at all. I've gotten it to the point where it does show the Apple logo in the progress bar, but it doesn't get any further than that. Um, I've seriously been modifying IPSWs like crazy. I probably have like 50 revisions and they all do nothing. So if you guys have any ideas on what to do, leave it in the comments. I really want to see this original iPad run something modern. And sorry about the fingerprints because I did not clean this beforehand. <laughs> Didn't really prepare for that. But yeah, if you guys want to, uh, tell me in the comments how I should get this up and running because Obviously, there are going to be people who are smarter than I am, of course, because I can't figure it out. So maybe I can get it to work. I'm really not sure. I should be able to, and I'm not going to give up until I actually do. But so hopefully I can get this working. I just, it's a pain in the butt because you have to modify an iPhone 4 IPSW. And obviously this is not by any means similar to an iPhone 4 like the iPod 4 is. So it makes it kind of difficult, but I'll figure it out hopefully in the future. So anyways, um, that will be the end of this video. Stay tuned to see if I will get this up and running. And one more thing is that if I actually do get iOS 7 installed on here, you will see in the description of this video, and chances are by the time this video is uploaded, that's not going to be there, but there will be text. Once I get it working, I will edit the, the once I get it working, I will edit the description of this video. And I'll say, hey, I got it working. A new video is coming out very soon. So stay tuned for that. And yeah, that should be it. Thank you guys so much for watching this video and I will see you guys all later. Bye guys.